Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a lovely day and your ears do not deceive you. This is the second AOS video going up this week. So um it's East it's Easter here and we're having a break from the Blood Bowl League and I thought I'd catch up with some AOS news. So today we are going over little snippets that we received from the Warmer community page the other day going over information from the battle tome. I know I should have probably covered this yesterday, but I felt those HQs and the new units were just too too good to miss. That I I had a talk about it. They got me so excited. So we if you haven't seen it, watch this video and with the some of the information we're going over today take that with you when we when you go to watch yesterday's video because some of these abilities and traits are going to be carrying over and they will buff up the uh, the units that uh, we went over yesterday so without any further ado and without any more waffling we're going to go straight into the information Right then, first off the bat, GW have decided to tell us a little bit more about depravity points. Um, if you've got the general handbook, you'll probably know what it was previously. But if you are new and you want to find out, it's as follows. It's a factor that the army can use. Like uh, the corn army have got um, blood tithe uh, points these guys have got depravity points. So what does that mean in game? I will read it out as follow. This allegiance ability allows you to summon new units of demons to the tabletop by spending these points. You'll earn the depravity points whenever a model is damaged but not slain by a slanish hero. So a hero takes a wound, this applies to mortal wounds in the same fashion, meaning you've got more ways to rack them up. So where corn is slain models these are it's for every wound made so if you were attacking multiple wound uh, targets you can rack them up and you can just flood the battlefield with with the extra units it's going to be extra buffs and you can if you've been unfortunate where you've lost a few units you can plug them back up so it's going to be very nifty, but like I said, it's got to be by a slanish hero. So it's not by any, you know, by any old uh, demonette or, you know, just any any old fool. It's got to be done by a hero. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think if they done it the same way as, like, you know, uh, corn where it was just models, model slain, it was going to go bonkers uh, by saying it's heroes and it's wounds you're giving it a bit of limitation that's because yeah it's, it, it needs it because it could get out of hand very fast but am I looking at this too simple let me know because I think this is a nice little nice little factor that they've got makes it interesting that it's wounds but yeah it could be manipulated to hell and back but then again what rules are not and you know that's just the name of the game isn't it so hey yo that's life right before I go on to anything else I noticed this what they've said it says this makes large models with multiple wounds like the keeper of secrets exalted chariots that's got the herald and the blade bringer you know a must for the army. Well, when I read Bladebringer, I couldn't remember, I couldn't even think about what the model would be. And I've had a little crack at the AOS app to see if they had got a model there that they've talked about, about the Bladebringer. And I can't see any rules for it. 
So I think this is going to be a new model that they've let slip in, and I don't know whether anybody have uh, picked up on it as well. But could this be like a little secret unit that they're keeping quiet about? Is this, I don't know, um, is this just a reimagining of, I don't know, like Seekers or something like that? Is it going to be a more, well, like a more buffed up version per se? I don't know. It's, uh, if you guys have got any any information about this, please leave them in the comments below and, you know, educate me. Right then guys, now we've got the poor man speculation out of the way, let's get into like the new tricks and new rules that uh, Slaanesh is bringing with their battle tome. First up, we're looking at the Locus of Diversion, which is going to be, I think, uh, like, you know, army-wide when it comes to a Slaanesh hero. So... Let's have a little read and see what it says. It says, uh, at the end of the charge phase, each friendly Hedonite hero that is within six inches of the enemy unit can create a locus of diversion. If they do so, take one enemy unit that is within six inches of the hero and roll a dice, add in two if the hero is a great demon. On a four plus, the enemy unit fights the end of the following combat phase after the players have picked any other units to fight in the combat phase you cannot pick the same unit that as the target for this ability more than once in the same charge phase whether the role is successful or not if the unit is affected by a battle trait uh, that is that is also affected by the rules that it would would allow it to fight at the start of the following combat phase that unit is not affected by the rules or any other rules because each effect cancels each other out. So and we read, I believe we read something like that yesterday. So it's, that's good. It's if you know you know, you've got a little bit of a softer unit like your demonettes, perhaps so you can ease the blow a bit by allowing them to go first, holding back the heavy hitters, allow it and allow allow them to take out. Uh, multiple targets to soften the blow, like I said. But yeah, it's uh, that I wouldn't I wouldn't pick it if I had a choice. But if I got it at hand, just because of it being an army wide, you know, effect, so be it. I will make use of that. So yeah, I think I think that's a nice little that's a nice little rule. So now we got that out of the way. Let's go into euphoric killers. Right then guys, here's Euphoric Killers, and I believe this is army-wide again, uh, but this is going to be like mostly your demonettes and anything that's got a pair of claws. So, Euphoric Killers is, uh, if the modified hit roll from an attack made with a melee weapon by a Chaos Slanesh model is 6, that attack inflicts 2 hits on the target instead of 1. Make a wound, wound and save roll for each hit if the attacking model's unit is twenty. Uh, attacking model unit is twenty or, or more models. The attack inflicts three hits instead of an unmodified hit roll instead of a six. So you uh, do your hits. If you roll a six, you get the extras. And if you've got a nice big blob unit, so like that's going to be mostly your demonet if you're going to run them in maximum blob. They're going to be taking out quite a few extra, extra models. So that's a nice little buff because I, I like I think demonettes are four plus three plus two hit, and if they want well, that extra, if they've got if they manage to hit something, you you're not going to sniff at it. Either. So I think that's a, a nice little uh, army wide uh, trick they got. That's a nice little. Uh, that's a nice little thing to have in your back pocket. It's not something I'm gonna say this as I always do. It's not something you should rely on. It's not something you should build your army around. But it's always a bonus if you can get it off. Because sixes when you need them never turn up. Now we get into the customizable bit. This is one of my favourite bits when it comes to uh, the uh, army. So you can use my hands rubbing together. It's the hosts. And as we know, they got three hosts within it. It's the uh, God Seekers, the Invaders, and 
the pretenders so what we know is the invaders are basically followers of Slanesh that couldn't give a tinker's toss where the Slanesh has been captured, killed or you know I know charm the barbed wire dildo up his ass they are just going to go out do their own thing pierce their nipples many times pierce anything they want it's up to them because they don't care because it's out it's out for the excess and of their pleasure so if you want to go the invader route we've got some traits and abilities that they can, that they can do so let's have a look at that then so here we go we got figurehead of the dark uh, prince uh, an invader's horse can have up to three generals instead of one only one of the generals which is owner's choice can have a command trait but all three are considered to be a general for the purpose of the command abilities however an invader's horse general cannot use command trait or command ability while they are within 12 inches of any other friendly invader horse general in addition each time one of your generals is slain for the first time you will receive one extra command point so I like these type of traits it's the ability to get your big guys out on a wing put your hitters in the middle and just traipse down the back of you I'm going to like worry about sending your, your army wide and you know being out of range because effectively you you've got three separate bu bubbles for you know, your abilities which is nice I know one of them is can only have a command trait but who cares when you've got, abil you've got an ability bubble that you can spread across the board you know, by three different things and the fact that when they die you get the extra command, command point which is always going to be a benefit to you which is you can burn through these really quickly and when the book comes out we can see all of them but yeah I, I kind of like this one it's not my favorite um, favorite one out of the host but this is like a really good set in place I just I think that's amazing so that's not the only uh, one we got to look at we got more Right then guys, if if you're going to go down the invaders route, I'm guessing it's going to be very, you know, fast paced because the law that they've given basically for the invaders is they're coming into your realm, they're coming into your town, they're going to fuck shit up and they're going to hit hard, hit quick and you're not going to always hit you until something's being prodded into you whether it's claw or whatever fleshy appendage but to show that aspect you've got this escalating havoc so it says at the start of your hero phase you receive d3 depravity points if any friendly invaders host units are wholly within your enemy's territory if three or more friendly invaders host units are wholly within the territory at the start of your hero phase you receive d6 depravity points instead of d3 so if you if you are relying on the depravity points table to um, build your army on the fly, in the invaders and this one in particular looks like it's going to just be constantly racking up the points for you. So we haven't seen the table as yet. I'd like to see the table, just like I'd like to see the endless spells they got. But yeah is if like I said if you would just need to build it on the fly if you want to put extra seekers down or you want to get your chariots out there this seems to be the way forward to build it quickly right then guys we've looked at the invaders now we're gonna have a quick look at the god seekers um, law behind the god seekers really is these guys are on the endless hunt for the slanesh they're like crackheads trying to find their fix they go in from realm to realm trying to sniff out uh, their god because they just can't cope that they're not that he's not with them i say him 
she. I like to think it's a she. It's a shim probably. It's probably got a bit of everything. But yeah, they are out there. They actively searching, and they're gonna cause carnage in their way. So we know that it's probably gonna be law saying that they're in the realm of shadow, and it's gonna build up on that. I hope we get some good books coming up to that. So we can see from like I don't know the townsfolk are stuck in the middle of it. But that's neither here nor there, that's my own personal preference, but I doubt that's going to happen. But, yeah, so these are a fast-moving army. They're not, I think they're faster than the invaders, but the invaders are not slow. I like to think that they are a fast one as well, because they want to, like I said, they want to get down to business ASAP. But these guys are always on the search. So let's have a look at some abilities from then. Right then guys we've got an allegiance ability here and it's called Thundering Cavalcade. Uh, the horse of the Slaneshi god seekers are thundering cavalry of cruel eyed hedonites that gallop forth on steeds of Slaanesh or ride atop whirling blades of chariots. Uh, add, one, add one charge roll for units in a god seeker host army. So I'm kind of guessing this is going to be a very very fast army that's going to rely on the seekers so it might be a cavalry host very minimum um, demonets on foot or perhaps they might turn around and say steeds are your, your troop choice because it sounds like they are trying to make it out that they'd, uh, they're always on the go and they're mounted so could be interesting but then again I am um, you know, always wrong with these things. Might never happen. It might be fun to see if you're there with your friends. It's to do it that way. So then you're making the most out of that uh, that ability. But what good is that ability if you haven't got to property points to you know fill up the army? So obviously there's going to be some trade and abilities. So let's have a look at. Let's have a look at one. Right then, guys, and here's how the God Seekers fill out the uh, the property points really quick. We've had a look at one for the Invaders. Now we're looking at one for the God Seekers. So it's called Maniacal Hunters. At the end of the charge phase, you receive D3 to property points if any friendly God Seeker host unit made a charge move in that phase. If three or more uh, host units made a charge move, you receive d6 to property points instead of d3. So, it's probably going to benefit you if you're going to charge charge in, because you've got that extra charge, to charge as much as you can, so you can maximise your uh, property points. So, it's a way of getting around the fact that it's just heroes, because you're, you're charging in and you're hitting hard. So, I, I feel this is probably going to be the... the the cavalry host so it's going to be fun to see on the table I hope that uh, Warhammer uh, TV on Twitch will start showing one or two one or two battle reports so we can see the differences in the hosts and I this is the one I'd like to see but again it's still not my favourite my favourite is coming up uh, next Right then guys, we are now on to my favourite, and that is the Pretenders. The Pretender host is, well, i got to be honest, I find it the most interesting. Because I, I think it's the hubris of the actual heroes within it. Because, um, if you guys don't know, Pretenders basically couldn't give a tinker's toss if... Slanesh's hero there. They they've got it in their heads that oh Slanesh had to go. Kinda shit at the job. I'm gonna be the new uh, god of excess. So, you know, that's gonna be very powerful keep the secrets ahead of them, just going, Yeah, I can do that job and I'm gonna lay waste to everyone in front of me. I'm gonna like flay people you know and 
put him in a m uh, mural of like you know a flayed orgy or whatever to show how grotesque and excessive they are to show that they can fill the boots as it were but let's go on to like some command abilities and traits like we've had a little snippet from the other ones so let's break this down only the little bits because uh, we don't know everything and the reason you want to take uh, the pretenders is because of this it's uh, called the heir to the throne if the general of a pretender's horse army is a hero they can they can have two different command traits instead of one command trait so he says then if you want to randomly generate the traits roll again roll on the table you know re-roll in uh, things or you pick your own but yeah so you can have one general two command traits so you can turn him into a, a bit of a toolbox unit so you can you're gonna have him you know for when you you need him to like, start building up property points you can have him to be a hard hitter you can have him as it means a slim edge he could probably do magic as well so you know he's going to be a jack of all trades master of none i'll give you that but he can do it all so let's have a look at a command trait that uh, he could pick up right then guys and we got one by you it's called warlord supreme and when I when I get this get to look at this one, it always gives me a, a very regal procession feel. Like you know, this guy th believes he's a god, and he's gonna have his army rolled out probably announcing his arrival. You know, he's he's gonna he's gonna want everyone to know you're lucky that he's there to uh, to chastise you and do very bad things to you and you know really you're not that lucky anyway before we start going into really bad conversation uh warlord supreme at the start of your hero phase you will receive d3 depravity points if your general is within three inches of an enemy unit if your general is within three inches of three or more enemy units at the start of your hero phase you receive d6 depravity points instead of d3 so as we can see no matter what horse you go for, there's always a way of generating extra extra depravity points to how the horse is run. So whether it's you've got to charge, you've got to take ground, or if you just want a lot of your army around you so you can march as one big unit. But that's not all. You can if you if you want to create a fighty boy HQ and you you don't like the fact that you know he's got all his army around him and you want him to splinter off now and again. There's a command trait for that. So let's have a look at that. And here we have it. It's called Strongest Alone. So let's have a little quick read. You can re-roll hit rolls for attacks made by this general while there are no other friendly unit models within 6 inches of this general. So, like I said, pretenders, they like to believe that they are new gods in waiting. They they want to, you know, their army and everyone that they come across to believe that they are, you know, the new god of excess, new god of pleasure. And how better to show it by um prowess in battle so you charge him forward he's going to get the extra re-rolls don't get me wrong it might not work it might it might be brilliant but yeah if you can't pronounce pronounce yourself as a god if you're not willing to show it so i kind of like these these traits these abilities it gives slanesh such a depth of character I feel and the one thing I will say about uh, Age of Sigmar is they knock it out of the park when you read the books and you you want to build an army like that they give you a way of making it so in depth it feels like you're playing that army out of the book and I gotta be honest when you read the lore for Slanesh they've done so well to 
show you that you ca can put it on the tabletop and you can customize it to how you want to play i i just think it's fantastic i gotta be honest i i'm i i know i'm a chaos uh, boy but this is fantastic and they've knocked out the park for me and that's it guys it's the end of the show i didn't want to make make it excessively long means as we're uh, covering this subject yeah that was that was a very bad pun i'm sorry but uh yeah um i've kind of fallen in love with slanesh they are they're not they're not on the pedestal with corn just yet but they're very close it's a fantastic fantastic army from what i can see so far and i just want to find out more so i hope you stay with me this week while we delve into more information i'm kind of hoping we'll get some information on their endless spells so soon as we see their out i will make a video about it and i want to say thank you to everyone who have stuck with me through this video and everyone that have watched the previous video because yeah, I'm surprised how well that's done in 24 hours for my channel. It's with a slow burner channel, and that's done really well straight away. So I want to say thank you to everyone that's checked it out and everyone that shares it and you know, you know, passes it on to their friends. I just want to say thank you very much. It means so much to me that we have got that community out there and. If you were not part of that community, please subscribe and uh, be part of it. We are a AOS slash Blood Bowl uh, channel. I know it's not, you know, the most popular subjects, but it's something that you know we we really love for on this channel. So um, before I go, uh, we got Teespring account. So we got a few T-shirts over there. They are more going up soon when I get a chance because. I just I don't have a lot of time to myself when it comes to like family work and you know doing the channel and trying to do any hobby in between is just crazy so we've got Teespring we've got PayPal account if you uh, want to donate to the channel you, whether you do or not I just want to say thank you for just being part of it just by watching it just by sharing it and yeah I'm gonna say goodbye now before I say anything else and I just want to say thank you again for checking us out and yeah just keep an eye out for future content and I shall see you in the next one guys.